In today's video, the training differences between men and women. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I want to talk specifically about the differences in training, both response and requirement for men and women. What are the differences? What should they look like and what should they expect? And um, first, I want to start by saying, let me get this out there. I don't think there's that much difference between men and women. There is, there is a gap in what we call absolute strength. Okay, when we talk about absolute strength, that just means raw, the amount of weight that a man can pick up versus a woman can pick up. There is some differences in that number, okay? But when we look at a term called relative strength, which is when we account for the difference in weight, the difference in muscle circumference, well, The numbers become a little bit different and I'll throw up a graph here. So when I was studying exercise physiology at the University of South Florida, we discussed this and to my surprise, it was a very short discussion. You see, there's not that much difference when it comes to men and women when it comes to relative strength. There is, however, a big difference when it comes to goals, when it comes to desire in training, what men and women are looking for. Those are often quite different and that's where we get into some interesting topics where we can talk about how we should program for men and how we should program for women there's going to be some big differences in how my programs are set up and if you're coaching athletes you should be doing something similar specific to their needs um, another topic of common concern is the menstrual cycle obviously women go through some hormonal changes every month that men don't go through and should we adjust our lifestyle and training for this period? Well, the answer is very individual based. I have some clients who during this period have severe issues. I'm talking insane cramps and they really struggle to get through their day. So we plan some scheduled time off during that period. Others prefer to just treat it like normal, have their normal day, and they find that the training, the exercise, the diet, the recovery from that helps keep them in a more balanced state. We do pay attention to dietary needs during that time. I find that cravings are often much different, so we can schedule some different types of macronutrient intakes around that. But having said that, we take it into consideration, but we do not treat men and women differently. In fact, I find that the women that I train, once they start training with me, get treated like men as far as training and volume. We're going to progress it responsibly, but we're going to train hard and heavy. And when they have previously not done that, I find two things happen. One, they respond. They respond to the training by increasing their lean body mass. When your lean body mass increases, well, you just feel happier because you're more jacked, right? The other thing is the enjoyment for lifting goes up. When, when we're getting better at a skill, that's when we really feel motivated and excited to move forward. And so when you get someone on a lifting program where they're constantly testing their PRs, constantly going for AMRAP sets or doing things as many reps as possible, you find that the enjoyment comes back into the lifting. Just because you're a female and you want to build your glutes does not mean you should be spending five days a week doing banded glute exercises. That's nonsense, okay? Training a muscle with high frequency and low intensity does not make it bigger. It just trains it to be an endurance muscle group. If you want to grow the size of your muscles, you need to be intelligently programming, okay? Overtraining a muscle group lightly multiple days per week is not going to allow for the adaptations to occur that increase muscle size. So let's talk about what some of the biggest differences are between men and women when it comes to training. Well, I'll tell you what mine was when I first started training. My first goal when I started lifting weights 
was to have a massive set of pecs like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Not many women are interested in that. In fact, some women tell me they do not want to see chest riders, and some do. That's a personal thing. But that would be probably the most immediate glaring difference, I would say, for men. Men want to build a big chest. Heavy bench press, incline bench, you know, dumbbell pressing, all the things, flies, that are going to make the pectorals big and full is something that is built right into most men's programming unless they request something other than that. Women, immediately, usually want to slim down legs, which means lower body fat. But I find that we can also accomplish that through putting on a little bit of upper body mass, putting on some lower body mass, and kind of balancing out the physique so it has more shape to it. Now, what does that look like for women? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna preferentially program lower body at least twice a week. And we can break up the training so that we're hitting hamstrings and quads once a week and glutes once a week. Now, the glute training might not look like what you think. I don't really believe in doing a lot of high rep, banded, low weight stuff. I really believe in using movements that are going to empower the body to push through. I really feel the best movements for the glutes are things like hip thrusts with real weight, okay? Not just body weight. Those are fine, but if we're talking about putting on muscle, leg press. Now the leg press, you have the opportunity to move your feet around on the platform. So for a woman to really grow her glutes, because tend to not want quad dominant, you put your feet a little bit higher, okay, and you'll find that you'll target the glutes a little bit more. Also, my favorite glute building exercise, hands down, the single leg split squat or the Bulgarian split squat where one foot is behind you, one foot is below you, and you have a dumbbell in your hand or you start perhaps with body weight. You can even use a broomstick handle or a PVC pipe handle for assistance to start out as you're building that. But done properly, that is going to target the glutes intensely, okay? Um, you know, things like squats and deadlifts are also going to target the glutes depending on a few things. Mostly, it's going to come down to the leverages and how you perform the lifts, okay? Leverages determine the effectiveness for any lift on any individual person. There's going to be an individuality to all our programs. Now, one common tr trend among lifters is going to be shoulders and back. I feel like a woman with a nice round set of shoulders and some thickness in their back just improves their overall shape and appearance, and for men, Having a good back is a must, especially if you're a physique competitor or if you're going to build a big chest, you don't want to be flat. You don't want to be one dimensional on one side and then shallow on the other. You really want to develop that back. Now, this comes from experience. I, I speak from making that mistake early on in my life. You know, back day was just a quick few sets, whereas chest day was an all out assault on growing these pecs. Um, the cool thing about that was once I started getting into bodybuilding, I started targeting my back. Now I love my back. So. Overall, these are the things that are the biggest differences between men and women. Now, we can get into even more specifics when we're talking about your goals. Are you just someone who wants to lose weight, lose body fat, put on a little bit of lean body mass and look better? Are you a physique competitor? If you're a physique competitor, are you a figure? Are you bikini? Are you men's physique? Are you bodybuilding? Those individual differences are not something I'm going to discuss right now, but I could if you prefer. I'd like to do that in another video. For now, I want to stick to the differences between men and women, the sex differences. What should that look like? Now, I don't change a lot when it comes to programming differences between men and women. Whether you're competing in powerlifting, whether you're competing in bodybuilding, which is, you know, bikini figure or women's physique, I feel that the difference is going to just be in the absolute load that you use not in how the intensity and the frequency is set up. That is going to be determined by how you're responding, your training experience. Certainly, men beginners and female beginners should start with low frequency, low intensity, and build up. Okay, those with lots of experience might have to have two to three days per week training a body part, two to three days really pushing themselves on that body part to grow for short periods of time. That's a progression that has to be done properly, okay? But it's the same for men and women. I don't treat them any differently when it comes to training. You push, you push hard, and there's really no difference. In fact, I find that women, because they tend to be a little bit less ego-driven, they're not so worried about putting two plates on the bench or you know putting three plates on the squat. Their technique 
tends to be a little bit better. And if you ever notice like why women have such great shoulders, I feel like it's because they put the proper amount of weight on the on their on their body to do the side lateral raises. They really pay attention to their their form. So I think men are a little bit more ego driven, especially early on. I know I was that way. Um, whereas women are more concerned about getting the, the movement correct and progressing appropriately. And that can lead to better muscle shape, better muscle size, because they're actually hitting the target muscles involved. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys are having an awesome Tuesday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.